1968, Jerry Condon refused Army orders to deploy to the war in Vietnam and left the U.S. living for three years each in Sweden and Canada. For the last five years, he's working with AWOL GIs sinking sanctuary in Canada. He directs Project Safe Haven and works with the War Resisters Support Action Team of Greater Seattle Veterans for Peace. And he's joining us here today. Thank you, Jerry. At this point, I should make it clear that we'll have tried in these last few minutes to give a voice to the voiceless in Vietnam and to understand the arguments of those who are called enemy, I am as deeply concerned about our own troops there as anything else. For it occurs to me that what we are submitting them to in Vietnam is not simply the brutalizing process that goes on in any war where armies face each other and seek to destroy. We are adding cynicism to the process of death, for they must know after a short period there that none of the things we claim to be fighting for are really involved. Before long, they must know that their government has sent them into a struggle among Vietnamese, and the more sophisticated surely realize that we are on the side of the wealthy and the secure while we create a hell for the poor. Somehow, this madness must cease. We must stop now. I speak as a child of God and brother to the suffering poor of Vietnam. I speak for those whose land is being laid waste, whose homes are being destroyed, whose culture is being subverted. I speak for the poor of America who are paying the double price of smashed hopes at home and death and corruption in Vietnam. I speak as a citizen of the world for the world as it stands aghast at the path we have taken. I speak as one who loves America to the leaders of our own nation. The great initiative in this war is ours. The initiative to stop it must be ours. This is the message of the great Buddhist leaders of Vietnam. Recently, one of them wrote these words, and I quote, Each day the war goes on, the hatred increases in the heart of the Vietnamese and in the hearts of those of humanitarian instinct. The Americans are forcing even their friends into becoming their enemies. It is curious that the Americans, who calculate so carefully on the possibilities of military victory, do not realize that in the process they are incurring deep psychological and political defeat. The image of America will never again be the image of revolution, freedom, and democracy, but the image of violence and militarism." Unquote. If we continue, there will be no doubt in my mind and in the mind of the world that we have no honorable intentions in Vietnam. If we do not stop our war against the people of Vietnam, of Iraq, of Afghanistan, immediately the world will be left with no other alternative than to see this as some horrible, clumsy, and deadly game we have decided to play. The world now demands a maturity of America that we may not be able to achieve. It demands that we admit that we have been wrong from the beginning of our adventure in Vietnam. That we must, that we have been detrimental to the life of the Vietnamese people, the Iraqi people, the Afghani people. The situation is one in which we must be ready to turn sharply from our present ways in order to, to atone for our sins and errors in Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan we should take the initiative in bringing a halt to these tragic wars. Then we must make what reparations we can for the damage we have done. Right on. We must provide the medical aid that is badly needed, making it available in this country if necessary. Well, we in the churches and synagogues have a continuing task while we urge our government to disengage itself from a disgraceful commitment. 
we must continue to raise our voices and our lives if our nation persists in its first ways in Vietnam, in Iraq, and Afghanistan. We must be prepared to match actions with words by seeking out every created, creative method of protest possible. And also to ma match words with actions. As we counsel young men and women concerning military service, we must clarify for them that our nation's role in Vietnam, we must clarify our, what the role is and challenge them with the alternative of conscientious objection. These are the times for real choices and not false ones. We are at the moment when our lives must be placed on the line if our nation is to survive its own folly. Every man and woman of humane convictions must decide on the protest that, boasts, that best suits their convictions, but we must all protest. Yeah.